All right, if you're using Apple Numbers, there's different data types that you can assign to a cell. Right now we're going to go over the pop-up menu data type, why you'd want to use it, and how it works. So I've created a table here that's just supposed to represent standard payroll data, something that you would encounter in most businesses, hopefully if they pay their employees. And this column, chosen this column as a good fit for a pop-up menu because you only want one of three values or blank. So really one of four values. And the way to do that is to tell Apple numbers to limit the choices and we're going to tell it exactly what it can be. So I've selected cell D2, but we're going to do this for this entire column except for the header. So I will hold down my shift key and press the down arrow to select all of D2 through D9. That's the range where I want to put the pop-up menu. And we'll go over to the right. I've already clicked on format. If I unclick it, uh, this little menu goes away. A little sidebar, so I'll click it again. And make sure that you're on the cell portion. And it is one of the data formats. So instead of automatic, so automatic's just guessing based on what you've put into the cell already. We're going to explicitly tell it that we want this to be a pop-up menu. And you'll see the pop-up menu defaults to just having item one, two, and three in it. So we'll take a look at how those function. When we come over to the left, if we go into D2, now the only values that you can input are items one, two, or three. So that limits a user from making a mistake. Let's say you type item one, but leave out the space. That would function as a completely different value. You can't do that with a pop-up menu. So if I were to change this to item two, it's going to be exactly the same as this one that I also changed to item two. You'll see in a little bit when we change these into categories that it makes sure that there's only three. So obviously you don't want the three values to just be item one, two, and three. What you can do is you can come over to the right and you can just double click on them and change what they say. So we'll just change this one to item one spelled out for some reason. Hit enter. You do that to all of the values that are in here. And if you want to add more, you just hit the plus sign. This is item four. And that may suffice for your pop-up menu. So if there's not that many items, you can just do it that way. If I come back to the pop-up menu, you'll see that item four is in there, so we can choose that. But be careful when you're doing this because somehow in this process, I accidentally deselected all of the other cells. So if I come to item two, it has the old values in it. So you would want to make sure you have them all selected and then manage the menu items. But we're going to show another way to do that because yeah, we only have three items that we want here. So we've listed them in another table. So this technique that we're going to use now will bring them in exactly as they're typed here. And if you have say 20 categories, a lot of times you may have them listed somewhere and you'll want to start from that list. So we're going to show you how to start from here. Um, and if there are duplicates in this list, it'll just combine them. So we wouldn't worry about that. Let's select A1 through A4. And to get that list in your pop-up menus, you actually make these into a pop-up menu when they're selected. So left click on that and you see that they all populated here. So I purposely put a blank cell in here. We'll see why I did that in one second here. I'm going to copy this. So this has a pop-up menu with the three values. And when I come over into the other table, I'm going to paste it here. In one, I put that blank in there so that a, I can paste them in as blank. So if you don't have the blank and you selected the admin, it would bring over the pop-up list, but it would start with admin. We want to start it with blank. And when you click on the menu, it has all the choices in here. So that none isn't coming through because you had this blank cell over in this other table. It's coming through because we decided to have the option to start with a blank. So if you don't do that and you paste these in here, you may think, let's say they all come over as production, you may take a look at the list and think that it's done. But if you come over with blanks, then you'll see that you have to populate all of them. And one thing to be careful of, if you, let's say, choose production, but you accidentally, you wanted that to be admin, if you just delete that with the delete key, the pop-up menu's gone. So a better way to do that is not to delete it and start over. If you're not sure yet, just change it back to none. 
or if you know what you want to change it to, do it through the pop-up menu instead of hitting delete because the pop-up menu will go away. So let's go through here real quick and fill out all of these values. We'll say we only have one warehouse worker. That person works really hard. Production. So now we'll use this list to show one of the things that you gain by controlling the inputs. So we're sure that every value of production is spelled the right way so they're the same value is that you can use this column now as a category. So when you click on category, use the department and all the admins are grouped together because you know they're spelled the same. So another option for categories is a pivot table. This next video will show you how to make a pivot table in Apple numbers. I'll see you in that video. Thanks for watching.